Let me tell you a story about a group of individuals whose lives were fraught with love, hate, desire, and disaster. An outsider fueled by hatred. Jealous control freak with daddy issues. A free-spirited girl with the appetite for love. A man whose only goal in life is to care. Their lives forever intertwined. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We open up to the image of a pristine mansion, Thrush Cross Grange. Birds are chirping, sun is shining, and the breeze is blowing. Enter our innocent bystander, Lockwood, a man who is merely a visitor in this complicated story. Lockwood arrives at Thrush Cross Grange, planning to stay a few months as he rests from his travels. After settling in, Lockwood decides to go visit the landowner Heathcliff at the neighboring property, Weathering Heights. Lockwood makes the hike to Weathering Heights and climbs the intimidating steps. The man who opens the door is dark, brooding, and his eyes look as though they carry a deep sadness. They sit down and have dinner together, with tension and distrust festering between them. Even though he was uncomfortable, Lockwood had warmed up to Heathcliff and decided to visit him the next day. Lockwood arrives at Weathering Heights once again, but the door is locked. He is met with the rejection of Joseph, the pedantic elderly servant who tells him Heathcliff is not at home. However, he is saved by a raggedy young man who opens the door, letting him in. He goes and sits down in the main room with a young woman who he soon comes to find out is young Kathy, who treats Lockwood with a little regard, if not rudely. Heathcliff soon arrives home. Lockwood, made uncomfortable by the whole situation, decides to leave. He grabs a lantern and heads out the door. Before he can get too far, however, he becomes lost in a violent storm. Thinking that he is trying to steal from the house, Joseph sticks the dogs on Lockwood. Nose bleeding and temper running high, Lockwood is rescued by housekeeper Zilla and carried into weather events. He is brought to an out-of-the-way room in the house where, on the bedpost, he finds three names carved deep into the wood. Catherine Earnshaw, Catherine Linton, and Catherine Heathcliff. He also finds a diary filled with stories about a young Catherine and Heathcliff and a man named Kindley. After dozing off, he begins to experience nightmares. He is soon awakened by a branch scratching on his window, which he goes to check out. A hand suddenly reaches through the window, yelling, Let me in! To rid him of the false of the grasping hand. He rubs it against the broken glass until it bleeds and she lets go. Heathcliff hears what's going on and rushes to the room in a fury and kicks Lockwood out. As Lockwood is leaving, he hears <coughs> HC begging for the ghost to come back. Lockwood is escorted home. I right, really need to redo the Lockwood returns to Thrush Cross Grange. He locks himself away after his traumatizing experience. Nellie Dean, the resident housekeeper at Thrush Cross Grange, brings him dinner and, in order to alleviate Lockwood's confusion, begins to explain the family relationships of the people in the house. Nellie talks about her early years that she experienced growing up with Heathcliff as a child. She tells Lockwood that after a business trip to Liverpool, Mr. Earnshaw decided to adopt Heathcliff as his own child, leaving his other two blood children, Catherine and Henley, jealous. Catherine learns to love him, though, while Henley becomes increasingly jealous as his father favors Heathcliff over him. Mrs. Earnshaw dies early in Nellie's life, leaving just Mr. Earnshaw, who also becomes sick. <laughs> as Earnshaw's health fails, he became less tolerant of the way Heathcliff and Henley were treating each other. As a result, Mr. Earnshaw decides to send Henley away to school. Catherine continues to tease her father about her exploits with Heathcliff, never really conscious of how sick her father really is. When Mr. Earnshaw dies, Catherine and Heathcliff console one another with talk of heaven. Henley returns to Weathering Heights with Frances, his newlywed wife, to attend his father's funeral. Taking control of the farmhouse, Henley immediately makes changes, moving Joseph and Nellie to the back kitchen and prohibiting Heathcliff from receiving an education. Henley also makes Heathcliff work in the fields. Henley does not pay much attention to either Heathcliff or Catherine, so they live as savages, skipping church and playing on the moors. One day, both Catherine and Heathcliff disappear. When they cannot be found, Henley orders the doors bolted. Nellie waits up for them, but finds out that Heathcliff returned home alone. He 
explains to Nellie that he and Catherine ended up near Thrush Cross Grange and stole closer to peer into the windows and make fun of Edgar and Isabella. As Catherine and Heathcliff laugh at the Lintons, they are heard and run away. Skulker, the Linton's dog, chases after them, biting Catherine on the ankle. Mr. and Mrs. Linton are shocked at the appearance and behavior of both Catherine and Heathcliff and are unwilling to allow Heathcliff to spend the night, even as they tend to Catherine's injury. Catherine remains at Thrush Cross Grange for five weeks. During her stay, Mrs. Linton works with her, transforming the wild girl into a young lady. When Catherine returns to Weathering Heights for dinner, she is barely recognizable. Heathcliff is hurt by the changes in his friend's appearance and attitude. The condition for their arrival is that the Linton children will not have to encounter Heathcliff. Finley agrees to this condition, although Nellie convinces Heathcliff to make himself presentable. Edgar makes what Heathcliff considers an insulting comment about his appearance, and he throws hot applesauce in Edgar's face. Finley has Heathcliff locked in the attic until dinner is over. Catherine blames Edgar for getting Heathcliff in trouble, and after dinner, while the others are listening to music and dancing, she sneaks away to visit Heathcliff. Nellie ends up permitting Heathcliff to go into the kitchen for a bite to eat. While eating, Heathcliff tells Nellie that he is plotting revenge against Hindley. This gives birth to Hareton. Unfortunately, however, she dies a week later because she had been suffering from consumption. Inley is distraught over the death of his wife and becomes tyrannical, forcing all the servants but Nellie and Joseph away. He also begins to treat Heathcliff more cruelly, and Heathcliff delights in Inley's downfall. Catherine begins to adopt a double character, behaving one way with Heathcliff and another with the Lintons. Heathcliff begins keeping track of how much time she is spending with Edgar and the Lintons. He's angry that Catherine belittles him when he confronts her with this. Edgar arrives at the end of the argument in the room with Catherine during Edgar's visit, and this annoys Catherine greatly. Unable to convince Nellie to leave, Catherine ends up punching Nellie and then lies about it. Edgar tries to intervene, and Catherine boxes his ear. In a drunken rage, Henley accidentally drops Hareton over the banister, but luckily, Heathcliff is present and catches the baby. Later in the kitchen, Catherine speaks to Nellie. Thinking they are alone, Catherine tells Nellie that Edgar asked her to marry him and that she accepted. Catherine explains that she cannot marry Heathcliff because Henley has degraded him so much. However, she expresses her love for Heathcliff. Heathcliff runs away. At this point in time, our Lockwood falls ill at the Prince and demands to hear the rest of Nellie's demand. She continues on with the return. Nearly six months after the marriage of Catherine and Edgar, Heathcliff returns to Weathering Heights and is received pleasantly by Catherine. Isabella and Catherine go to visit Heathcliff at the Heights, and Isabella becomes infatuated with Heathcliff, but is not reciprocated on his side. The next day, back at the Grange, Nellie sees Heathcliff and Isabella embrace. When Catherine hears of this, she confronts Heathcliff about it. He tells her, I'm not your husband. You need to be more jealous of me. Finley soon dies, leaving Heathcliff with the ownership of Weathering Heights due to his indebtedness to Heathcliff. He then marries Isabella Linton. He treats Isabella very poorly in an abusive setting. Catherine falls very ill, gives birth to her daughter Kathy, and dies soon after. Heathcliff beseeches her ghost to haunt him in any way, as long as she doesn't leave him. Isabella flees to London and gives birth to her son Linton. They remain in London to avoid Heathcliff. Thirteen years pass in peace. Young Kathy, the spitting image of the late, stubborn, and adventurous Catherine is taken care of by Nellie Dean. She grows up with no knowledge of Weathering Heights as she is required by her father, Edgar, to remain on the Grange. This is until she sneaks out of the Grange and runs into Harrison on the moors. After a few more years, Isabella passes away, leaving Linton in the hands of his rightful father. Linton is a weak and sickly boy who can't do much else aside from the boy. The boy is treated even worse than Isabella herself. Was. 
Three years later, Catherine runs into Linton and he flips on the doors. There on out, he conducts a secret letter correspondence with him. Nellie, however, finds the letters and destroys them. To remain in contact with her new friend, Kathy begins sneaking out to see Linton who tries to persuade her to come back to Weathering Heights in order to nurse his sickly self. It turns out that it is all a plot for Heathcliff to bring the two young people together so they will marry and, when Linton dies, Heathcliff will, by right of property ownership, inherit Rushcross Grange. As Edgar grows ill, Heathcliff is able to get Nellie and Kathy back to Weathering Heights and locks them up there until they agree to a marriage between Kathy and Linton. Edgar dies soon after his daughter is married away to Linton. Linton then quickly dies following Edgar. If Heathcliff now controls both Weathering Heights and Thrushcross Crane, he forces Kathy to live at Weathering Heights as a common servant. The story now comes to present, where Heathcliff has rented out Thrushcross Crane to Lockwood. Lockwood is disgusted and taken by the story and leaves Thrushcross Crane and runs to London. Six months later, Lockwood returns to Thrushcross and Nellie tells him the new key. Kathy and Harrison have now fallen in love despite their original relationship of mockery and taunting due to Harrison's deprivation of education by Heathcliff. Heathcliff becomes obsessed with his memories of the late Catherine, beginning to hallucinate her ghost and talking with it. After a night wandering, presumably coming to grips with what he had done with his life, he returns home and dies peacefully. After his death, Harrison and Kathy inherit Thrushcross Grange and Weathering Heights visit the graves of the late Catherine and Heathcliff, trying to start their new lives with a clean slate. <laughs>